Welcome to a simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank and this one is part 89. Painting the boiler using etching primer, preparing and painting the running boards followed by the side tanks and cab assembly. And here we go straight into it. I'm in the outer part of the workshop right by a wide open door. The temperature is nice and warm today so the paint should dry quickly and I'm applying etching primer to the brass sheet on the boiler. I call this brass sheet on the boiler cladding, but some people call it cleading. But either way, it's just a piece of metal that wraps around the boiler to hold the heat insulation material in place. Usually I paint the things in the outer part of the workshop mainly because of the wide open door, but also it's just very convenient and it keeps the smell of paint out of the main workshop. My workshop has an outer PVC door followed by an inner PVC door into the main workshop. This double door idea is quite a good idea because apart from being good for security as both of the doors are alarmed it means that whilst the paint is drying in the outer part of the workshop I can go into the inner part of the workshop where everything smells much fresher. Probably everything but me in fact. There are different schools of thought about spraying using rattle cans. I spray in short bursts and I've always done it this way. It may be wrong, I don't know, but I get good results. If I hold my finger on the nozzle all of the time, I usually get runs or sags in the paint. As I mentioned earlier, the weather outside the workshop today is absolutely beautiful. Blue skies and very warm, which is really good for drying paint in the outer part of the workshop. Sometimes in winter it is a bit of a problem, but in readiness for next winter I have an oil filled radiator which I will put in the outer part of the workshop just to make sure it doesn't get damp. Because there's a bit of a problem sometimes if you spray in a cold damp atmosphere, the paint blooms. Not too important with this etching primer, but with the top coat it doesn't look good. After painting the boiler barrel with etching primer, it's time to go back into the inner part of the workshop and use some of this stuff, hopefully just to remove the dirt and grime from the running boards. If it removes the paint, I will have to remove all of it, but luckily that doesn't seem to be the case. I'm applying plenty using a paintbrush, and what's coming off the running boards is a combination of grease, grime and coal dust. And some of this grease, grime and coal dust is very tenacious, and I found a better way to remove it was to use some emery cloth. Eventually though, I got the running board back to just its original paint finish. I'm a firm believer in the logic that if the existing paint is stuck firmly to the metal, then it doesn't need removing. All I need to do is rub it down to key it for the next coat of paint. Once I'd finished cleaning up the running boards, I brought the boiler from the outer part of the workshop and placed it on one of the side benches. So the next part of the operation is to take both of the running boards into the outer part of the workshop and paint those also with etching primer. As I mentioned in the last episode, this etching primer is not designed for brass, but it does stick to it quite well. Painting over previous paint can be a problem. The last thing I want is a great big pool of paint over the top of the old paint, which could attack it. So I'm basically applying several lighter coats. And as it's so warm and full of fresh air in the outer part of the workshop because the door's open, the paint dries very quickly. This clip is running at 2000% faster than normal and you can actually see the paint drying. What a rare treat for people who like to watch paint dry. The next part to work on is the main superstructure, comprising the side tanks, the spectacle plate, the bunker and the cab. A while back I resoldered the bunker because it was loose and here I'm just smoothing it off using a drum sander in my Proxon motor tool. And once I've done that, I've finished off the job with some emery cloth and now it's feeling quite smooth and quite round without a sharp edge. Where possible, it's a really good idea to avoid perfect right angle sharp edges because the paint does not stick at that point. In this clip, I'm using a wire brush in the Proxon motor tool just to find any bits of paint that are still stuck to the superstructure. Initially removing this paint was a real ordeal, it took quite a long time. Two tins of Nitromose paint remover and, well, it was just a pain. 
If you've been following this series, you will realise that I had to screw the assembly onto a wooden frame because it was very weak. But now, owing to the new spectacle plate and repairing the sides, the structure is self-supporting. I have a love-hate relationship with painting. Part of me likes doing it. There's a strange satisfaction in watching something really horrible turn into something that looks good. I used to get the same feelings many years ago when occasionally I would watch one of my girlfriends applying the makeup. Once again turning something really horrible into something that's very presentable and looks good. In case there are any ladies watching, I would like to apologise for the girlfriend jokes. They started off as a bit of a laugh, people request more of them, and occasionally as I say things when I'm narrating the videos, I can't help myself by slipping a girlfriend joke into the mix. Even though I'm a bit of an alpha male, I really am not a misogynist. I've had two divorces in my life so far, so I don't have any wives, but I have three beautiful daughters, all of whom are very successful in their own fields. The procedure for painting the superstructure is quite simple. Lay the part on its side, so the most noticeable bit will not have any runs or sags in it. Then once the paint started to dry on the side, I turn it the right way around and paint the top. This clip is running at four times normal speed just to get through it because I get fed up after a bit. It's very important when painting using a rattle can not to bash the rattle can into the existing paint, like I've just done. The job's starting to look something now. I won't be able to paint the other side until tomorrow when this side will have dried and I could put it down on a suitable piece of wood to spray the other side. And that's about it for this video. I'd like to say as I always do, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.